Hello, and welcome to the Kosh. I'm Timber Smith, your host, and once again, we got another fabulous week on the Kosh here, and i um, super excited about this week's guest. Um, we, get a, we get an opportunity here to find out a, a little bit more about a project going on in Oshkosh that I've had several emails ask, and people wanted to see if we could get a guest on here about this, and lucky enough... We know a few people, so we were able to get a really good guest who is informed and can let us know what's going on. But before I go any further, let me introduce our guest. And once again, you know, I slaughter names, so I'm going to apologize in, in advance if I don't. Our guest this week is Brenda Hayes. You got it. Brenda Haynes. Okay, Brenda Haynes. How are you doing? I am so good this morning. Okay. Yeah. You feeling good? Are you ready to take on the cash? I am ready. All right. All right. So, Brenda, can you please share a little something about yourself and what is your connection to the cash? Well, I'd be happy to share a little bit about myself. I uh, have lived in Oshkosh for the last 20 years. Uh, my husband, Alex, and I moved here in 2000. I know that man. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have lived here for just over two decades. Uh, before that, uh, the uh, we lived in Appleton. So we are Fox Valley uh, folks for a long time now. and uh, But I'm not from here originally. I actually grew up in western Wisconsin, and I'm a small town kid. I grew up in a, a town called Arcadia, which is a town of 2,000 people. What? Two? Yeah, 2,000. 2,000. I know. I know. Mm. My graduating class was like 66, so tiny, tiny, right? Okay. Uh, but Arcadia is the world headquarters of Ashley Furniture. So the town oh. population actually almost doubles, I think, during the day. I don't know if that's still an accurate statistic, but yeah, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, you know, it, Oshkosh is the big city, right? When you're from a town of 2000. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm from Milwaukee. So, you know, the cash yeah. feels <laughs> tiny it, to you. Well, it used to. Yes. Now it feels just right. Just right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ashley Furniture. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, have you had a chance to go back home? I mean, I'm just curious because, you know, I got some furniture on order and I'm trying to figure out <laughs> we why were just is it talking about that. Why is it taking six to eight months to get some furniture? So, I, you know, if you got any connections back at home with Ashley furniture, <laughs> I just want to know what's going on. My so. mom and dad will be very happy to hear you say that they want me to come back home. I'm, oh, uh, <laughs> oh. They're, they're there now. So it'll be, yeah, I'm headed, I'll head back this summer to see them, which will be, which will be great. But so I, uh, I grew up in Arcadia, went to college in Iowa, uh, Warburg College is my undergrad. And then I was a uh, double major in communication arts, uh, electronic media and political science. And uh, so my first job out of college, I was a television news reporter in Eau Claire. What? Yeah, yeah, that's where I met my husband. We worked together. We did not date at that point. We just worked together. And then I moved over here to work at Fox 11. And I worked out of the Valley Bureau, uh, covered, you know, Appleton, Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, kind of east and west of there. And uh, did that for about three and a half years. And then I saw a job opening at the Oshkosh Public Library, Winifox Library System. And I went to work at the library. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, yeah. So, And I, I loved working at the library. Um and I uh, met the woman at the time who was running the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation. And uh, she was had a, an opening for the first ever marketing development person at the Community Foundation. So I applied for that gig and got it and spent three and a half years there. And that was, I don't know for if people who listen to the Kosh know the Community Foundation, but amazing organization. No, I, I think... Can we go down that road? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'd like to know more. You know, I know it exists. Mm -hmm. So what, it, what, it, you know, anytime you hear foundation, there's like this, you know, like they're doing good things, but you don't always know the good thing. It's kind and of so, like there's shrouded in mystery sometimes, a right? Bit, yeah, right? Yeah. So what, what's going on over there? Yeah. So the community foundation exists uh, to help people uh, do good things in the community. So people set up charitable funds that do everything from scholarships to arts programs to uh, community betterment. And 
uh, the the foundation, the purpose of it really is to help make the community stronger. Oh. It was set up back in the 20s. So some people back then had some vision right. that this wow. would be an organization that would last for a long time and really do good things. So they've done everything from when the water park, when Pollock Community Water Park got redone, they were a big help in that. Building the Leech Amphitheater, big help in that. Downtown Revitalization Plan, big help in that. So they've had their fingers in lots and lots of things. And they give out tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships every year to really? students. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, I think there's a website, Fox River Valley Scholarships, or Fox Valley Scholarships, um, that they... Um, that they award scholarships through, so just amazing organization. So I was really lucky to be a part of a part of that uh, for three and a half years, and then uh, my business partner and I, Heidi Strand, uh, started Blue Door Consulting, um, and that's a marketing consulting company here in Oshkosh uh, in 2002. And I was a silent partner for the first two years, and then we uh, had grown it to a point where we needed both of us full time, and uh, we have continued to grow it today up to today. And uh, we now have a team of about 40 who uh, work on all sorts of branding, content, marketing, web development kind of projects. So oh, that's, that's the fun. Oh. Well, you know, there was all sorts of shout outs we needed to get in there, but I, <laughs> I wasn't going to jump in and stop anything. Let me, let I'm a out. fast talker. No, no. Shout out to the foundation. Shout out the, to the library. I mean, oh, that, yes. we have like such an amazing library in we our really community. Do. That, and you know what I like? I like that, you know, they got these apps where you can take things out digitally. So exactly. that's super cool. People don't know that always. Yeah, oh. they have great online resources as well. Um, so yeah, and we, it's just, it's a beautiful building. It's a great community center. Uh, they, they really have done a nice job of uh, making themselves accessible, I think, yes. to the public and being a great resource. So. I'm a, um, are they open yet? Do you know if they're fully back open? I think um, there might still be some limitations, the, but I think they're doing a good job of making themselves accessible to people. Okay. Hey, I just want you to know that we share a library pass. I actually used to work at the Milwaukee Public Library what? back no in the day. Yes, I was a circulation aide, so I was putting the books back. You never do I – I never read so much in my life than – you're putting books back and you see all these books that you never knew existed. And I would sit and I'm sure you, we had the coolest librarian shout out to my man, Mr. Banks. He hooked me up back in high school, back in the day. And you find about out about all these books that you didn't know existed. And then I would sit and just read for like 15 minutes about, you know, and dig in for him. And, um, he was always super cool. Like he, he might look at me a little bit of side eye, but he, (laughs) He never formally came up and was like, uh, Timber, you got to get back to work. So, I mean, I, I appreciate that, Mr. Banks. Well, that's a <laughs> shout out for sure. I uh, I remember hearing a f- uh, saying once that the most interesting book is the one that's next to or two down from the one you were looking for. Oh. Meaning when you're browsing on the shelves, uh, you, you go looking for something and you think this is the one that I want. And then you look down the shelf and you're like, wait, this one looks even better. That's the nature of being in a library. You get the opportunity to see all these uh things that you didn't know existed yeah i think it's the ultimate rabbit hole totally right exactly exactly it's it's kind of like when you're looking on um let's just say like netflix if for a movie yep right and then the next thing you know you're down actually more like youtube youtube (laughs) you know Uh, that's the one i was gonna say yeah youtube you you find that video and then all those other videos pop up and then you're down the rabbit hole and then it's two hours later (laughs) and you're still watching videos on youtube guilty yeah have done it (laughs) and um i the okay so can you tell me the name of the marketing business again Blue Door Consulting. Blue Door Consulting. Okay, yes. shout out to Blue Door Consulting. Oh, thank you. Um, and I just want to put a, a plug in there. Uh, I know this amazing young lady who is an interactive web management <gasps> graduate. Oh. Um, you know, uh, if you happen to be looking for anybody hey, uh, that just happens to be right now. my <laughs> daughter. Uh, and so, <laughs> um, and I better she, have a resume in hand by the time the show is over. That's what I'm thinking. Oh. Um, <laughs> We can make that happen. We will pass. We will absolutely take that. So the, these are the things we make happen on the right. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we have no shame. Shameless plugging. All right, we're gonna jump into the first segment. You ready? I'm. We're, I'm ready. All right. Um, 
it is called what in the world is going on with that's where you start off with the phrase what is what in the world is going on and you finish with whatever is going on in your mind so Brenda what's what's happening well I heard your episode with Amy Albright and you were talking about something that was new segments for the cash so what in the world is going on with new segments I want to know if you got any any uh suggestions because I brought a few in case oh no I love this okay <laughs> um I've been I'm I've I'm in turmoil. That's oh, the best way to put okay. it. Okay, well, so I didn't like, mean to put you on the no, spot. No, no, hey, look, I, look, this is part of being on the cash. <laughs> um, I don't, there's one I was coming up with uh, that I, I thought would be really cool that would be like uh, the best advice your parents ever gave you. Ooh, that right? is good. And I just, because I feel like your parent always gives you some piece of advice that like, is sometimes it's so random, but it means so much because you don't figure it out until you're older. Exactly. That was my, what my dad used to say to me. You don't think that I'm right now, but when you're, you know, at, you know, I was 16 or something. When you're 25, you'll understand what I mean. All right. He was right. He was right. <laughs> <laughs> was it 25 exactly? It was like boom. Probably. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm. So that's one I'm thinking of, but. And, and you know what? Since you brought it up, we're going to try it out later. Ooh, I got it. I'll have to think fast on that. All right. Yeah. Um, but I want to hear, what were you thinking for segments? Because, you know, the Kosh is a show of the people of the Kosh. So I need to know, what, what, what are you thinking, Brenda? Well, I was thinking it would be fun to ask people, what's their favorite Oshkosh hidden gem? Oh, I like that. Because we have so many awesome local places. And I don't know that everybody always, you know, you get kind of in a rut as a person, right? You go to your faves and you miss out on the fact that maybe there's something new, something that you need to discover. And I thought it'd be fun to hear from your guests what their favorites are, because I'm always up for trying something new. And I, I like to think that, you know, we could help each other not feel like we're missing out on something. Okay. You know, I'm going to put that out there to the Kosh listeners. Hey, uh, if you like that idea, please don't hesitate. Email us at askthekosh at gmail.com because um, I like that idea a lot, actually. Except for um, some hidden gems I ain't going to share because I don't want you in the spot <laughs> taking my spot. Because you know how that happens. You share your hidden gem. It's like sharing your fishing spot. You know, the next thing you know, somebody's in your fishing hole all the time. You know, I don't want somebody in my favorite chair at my favorite location because I shared it with the world. You might have to find out on your own. But <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, we share and then those businesses or organizations or hotspots become so popular that maybe they grow and it's good for them. I don't know. That was that was my thought. No, I, I like giving the shout outs. So absolutely. I am all about that. We should totally do that. I, OK, I, I'm feeling that. That's a great one. Awesome. All right. My one other one was, uh, you know, I'm about kind of visualizing and and casting a vision and helping people see. So I, I think like, what does Oshkosh need next? And this is, this is like so fantastic. A recent example of this, I was talking with someone, with some people last summer and I said, I think Oshkosh really needs uh, a place where you can rent like kayaks and stand up paddle boards and that Bruh. kind of thing. And, and now it's happening. I mean, I didn't make it happen just by saying it, but Maybe when people talk about stuff like that, it gives somebody who's already got, got an idea right. the courage to go after it and make that happen. So I think talking about, like, what do we think our community needs next would be really cool, too. Oh, okay. I think we got two new segments. I think they, they, that, that those are good. Oh, yay. Thank you. You know, I love brainstorming. So you, you can take it or leave it. But I just I love brainstorming. So thanks for letting us play with that a little bit. Hey, that sounds like somebody who might be in the marketing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to say that, Guilty. you know, maybe maybe that's part of how that works. <laughs> You're uh, on to me. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Um, no doubt. Um, okay. Yeah. I think we can incorporate those, you know, Hey, cash listeners, please reach out. Let us know. Let us know what you think about those concepts. I, I think those are pretty doggone good ideas. Um, no doubt. All right. Um, uh, my, what in the world is going on with for this week is the housing market. Oh yeah. Right. It's hot. It's crazy. It's like crazy hot right now. Right. Like 
I keep hearing now, I'm not out here looking for a house because I look, as you know, I'm in a remodeling process. You're remodeling. I'm remodeling. And that was because the market was so hot. Smart move. Well, it really it was going to be a better move because my wife was trying to condo us. And, oh. and, and I'm, I, I'm too young for a condo. You're like, I'm not ready for that. Yet. Yeah, no, no. That's a yeah. different level of life as yes. far as I'm concerned. Yes. I'm, I'm still, I like to think, young and vivacious. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, um, but I just from people that I know out here, I feel like you can't just go into this willy nilly. Like you oh, can't no. just be like, oh, I hear the market's hot. I'm going to put my house for sale. Uh, I think you need to go buy a house and then put your house Otherwise, for sale. You will find yourself without a place to live. I mean, it will be literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally. It, it moves so fast right now. It moves yeah. so fast right now. Uh, my husband's brother and his partner just relocated to Oshkosh and they were looking, you know, at the market and cute houses would go quickly. And uh, yeah, so it's, you got to be on your game if you're going to, if you're going to do this. And especially if you have a house, if you're listing your house first, make sure you have one lined up, right. I think, right? Yeah, right. Because it is that serious and, and things are being sold before they ever hit market. Mm-hmm. And it seems like if you look at something and you kind of like it, yeah. it's gone by the next day. Yeah. And people are coming with cash. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not in the market right now for a house because I like to think about my decisions. You know, I like to ponder. Right. This would be, that's a lot of pressure when you got to decide that fast. And it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah the going rates are, are, uh. Things are going beyond what prices used to be, which is cool. Big and time. we have an affordable housing market. Oh yeah, here Big compared time. to, you know, the coasts and things like that. Oshkosh is, I think, a pretty affordable place to to live and buy a house. But it's been ticking upward. It, it, it is, which I'm, I'm sure it's good. You know what? If there is a realtor out there in the Kosh land, um, I'd love to have that conversation Ooh. because I would just like to have a greater understanding on what happened, right? Because it just seemed like. Boom, all of a sudden this demand just went bonkers. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Like what's driving that? Yeah. Do you think it do you think it uh is partially pandemic related because we all were spending so much time in our houses and we started to think, ooh, it would be better if I had Absolutely. I think spending time in your home as much time as we did during a pandemic, I think people made reassessments about what their needs were for mm-hmm. the home. Um, and there's more needs for different things, right? Like, uh, I, I was reading an article the other day and they said one of the biggest demands now is the home office. I was just going to say, right. Thinking about how much remote work has happened and it's going to continue to happen. Right. Cause I think that's been the other dis- big discovery of the pandemic is a lot of companies that hadn't embraced remote work are now saying, you know what, you want to work from home a couple days a week, full time. That's all good. Right. Um, and, and the thing is, is you can't put it back in the box now, right? Exactly. It's, no. <laughs> it's out the box and, and it's proven. It, people can be very productive in those settings, maybe even more productive. Um, so business and it saves costs. And, you know, hey, let's be honest, business are businesses are made to make a profit. And if it's a cost cutting measure where you can have people work from their homes, I mean, they're, it's going to be considered. You know, we've always at Blue Door, we've always had people work from home like our very first employee has rem- worked remotely since, I don't know, 2005 or six, whatever okay. that was. So that's always been on our, on our docket. And, and I think you're exactly right that it can be uh, a way to kind of keep costs in check. That's certainly not the reason we did it. We did it because we wanted the best talent that we could find. And sometimes mo- relocating isn't an option right. for people. They need to live close to family or whatever. The one thing I would say though, is companies, as we do this, we have to remember that people still need to feel connected to each other and to their, to their organization. And that culture really still matters. And we have to be intentional about creating a strong culture. It's easy if people are all remote and we just kind of think, okay, just do your own thing. But we're still an, we're still a team. We're right. still working together to get something done. And we've got to still facilitate that level of team. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I mean, Zoom and Teams and all of that is all fine and dandy, but there's nothing like the energy of sitting in the room full of minds brainstorming and working towards a, oh, you a, got a goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it. I miss it. 
um, I'm not going to lie, this week, uh, there was two meetings uh, or a meeting that maybe two uh, that happened this week. And I made the I was so used to everything being Zoom and Teams and things. And I made the automatic assumption that it was that it was no, remote and it was totally in person. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna be in that strange period now too right so there's this period where we're gonna have to get out of that mindset and we're gonna actually have to look or oh, is this because there are some i'm sh- I, we've had i've been in uh on certain teams and in certain meetings where there's definitely that that conversation of this is working because of there's so many people so we need to keep we're gonna keep doing remote yeah but then we can't ignore the fact that we're getting away from it, you know, as people are getting these vaccinations and things. So mm-hmm. I, I just think like we're going to have to keep an eye on our Google calendars here and just <laughs> not make assumptions. Exactly. I had a similar situation this week where uh, we were uh, it was a presentation that I was scheduled to give. And uh, a day before someone said, is this in person or is this remote? And I had made the assumption it was remote. I was glad they were asking the question uh, <laughs> to, just to be sure. So yeah, you're right. We gotta, we gotta pay attention to all of this. And, and I think also create opportunities where, where it makes sense to be in person, to do that, to give people a chance. I don't know. Our team's like super excited to be back together. Like, right. Let's do this, you know? So just recognizing that people have been kind of working by themselves for a long time and create opportunities where we can. Hey, I, I, I I totally feel that. And I'll tell you what I have noticed. And I, I might have mis- mentioned this in a past episode, but have you noticed that when you run into people now, they want to talk? Oh, my gosh. And like we've we've noticed also just the likelihood that people will sort of drop by is is increasing, you know, oh. like, oh, you're si- you're hanging out in your driveway. You know, like we uh, having a driveway fire. We're going to we're going to pop over. You know, it's safe. It's outside. All that jazz. Yeah, I think we're missing each other. And yeah. I think it's it's time, you know, t- to to fix some of that now that now that vaccination rates are rising and we can do that safely. Oh, we we have always had the people with the drop over. Uh, they they like to come and hang out with us in what I call the she shed, which oh, is. Oh, hey. Uh, yeah, we have a she shed. It's called our garage. It is my <laughs> it is not our garage. It is my wife's garage. So the she shed. It I is. like it. And, and uh, you know. We, we definitely have people that like to pop over and, and, and we love having guests. Exactly. Right. Yes. And, and it feels even more so now that uh, it's like, OK, I'm ready to see people. Yes. Let's bring it on. Let's bring it on. OK. You ready for the next segment? I'm Here. ready. Bring it on. All right. We're jumping into word slash phrase association. Uh, just tell us what comes to mind uh, with these words. So the first word is food. Ooh, I always think local when I think food. Of course, this is because I'm a, for those who don't know, I'm a a current president for the Oshkosh Food Co-op Board of Directors. And uh, so when I think food, I think about the local food scene, local producers, local growers. So I think of uh, companies like Poco Pizza, Sean Pollock. Do you know Poco Pizza? No. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm excited to tell you about Poco Pizza. Oh, oh, come on. Okay. Poco Pizza is uh, in Van Dyne. So just a little bit south of Oshkosh between Oshkosh and Fond du Lac. And Sean Pollock is the owner. He, he sources, I think every ingredient for the pizzas locally. So either grown on his farm or raised on his farm or from others in the area. And then he sells them. He makes the pizzas freezes them, sells them out of his farm store on Saturdays, or you can order online and have them delivered to your house on Sundays. Oh, and they are like super creative flavors. So yesterday I went out there and I got radish and ramp and white button mushroom. So yeah, exactly. They are fantastic. Uh, and, and I just love knowing that I'm, you know, supporting this local entrepreneur. Um, another one is uh, Thunderbird bakery, um, a local bakery. I think I've, I might have heard about them. Do they have the sourdough bread? You know them. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. And and uh, also you can order online and have it delivered or uh, they have a uh, like a kitchen that they sell out of on Saturday mornings. So um, Olden Organics is another one um, out in Ripon. Um, they have a they do local food to your doorstep is the the online ordering um, for that. And that's veggies and uh, they've got quite a range of products. So veggies and some bread and some like 
maple syrup and honey and I don't know it's all seasonal so kind of what's on all on their website right now but great great stuff so when I think food I think of the local food scene and local producers that I've gotten to know through the work on the co-op and and how you know rich rich this this is and developing that now you've you've got me super curious about this pizza place yeah I'm telling you it is worth the the trek uh it they he's got a you know he's he has um some other local uh, producers products there as well. He's got Thunderbird Bakery. He's got some maple syrup, some honey. Um, he has Kelly Creamery ice cream, which if you haven't been to Kelly Creamery, another great, um, there's, there's to the South. Um, but they have great flavors. I think the one we tried yesterday was, uh, strawberry rhubarb, which is really springy. Sounding, right. Yeah. Yes. Just, uh, so we we're lucky. We've got some good stuff going on here. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that uh, we might need to put some of those uh, links in in this episode of the podcast because oh. I mean, you know, as the cash listeners hear these things, they're going to be like, um, yeah, I need to know more about that. <laughs> can you can you hook us up? Exactly. So I think we can do that. All right. Um, cocktail or beer? Oh, why discriminate? <laughs> 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 it's not an either or it's, it's an not, and it's an and i like to see the world as an and kind of place yeah exactly i'm not i'm not fussy but that's another place where we're lucky we've got some great local breweries yes. you know, local fifth ward bare bones um we're fox river like we've got we've got some good things happening here in oshkosh and i i like supporting those places i think what they're doing is really creative they come up with they come up with uh some great flavors. Um, if it's not, if it's not local, I'm a dark beer drinker. Ooh. Yeah. And what, I, what, what's that? What's that favorite? Well, my absolute all time favorite, I don't think they make anymore. It was a beer called Coco Mole and it had, uh, it had like notes of chocolate and hot pepper and Ooh. yeah. And I've been chasing something similar. <laughs> for a long time and yeah just I, I drink it I drink it and I said this beer will change your life you know <laughs> it's that kind of thing so but um yeah I'm a I'm a fan across the board I think we've got we've got a great um you know creativity here cocktails beers all of that I even like the places that are doing um like fun mocktails to drink because not everybody wants to wants to take in alcohol all the time so yeah. I'm a fan of I'm a fan of it all a good mocktail is there's a place for it. I think right? so. Right, and I, and I actually think that's a market. I think that's a huge market that's uh, probably goes untapped, underserved for sure. Yeah. I th- yeah, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of people. You know, for whatever reason, I got to get up and work early tomorrow. I, you know, I I just don't want to I just don't want to do it. Whatever the reason might be, uh, I think there's opportunity there to even be more um, have more. So anyway, okay. that's the story. So. Um, What's the cocktail? We we know the beer. Oh yeah. Um, well, you know, I think when you're in Wisconsin, and a uh, good old fashioned is always <laughs> is always equivalent to Friday night. I remember as a kid thinking, I don't get why adults drink these all the time, mm-hmm. and then as an adult realizing, oh no, now I get this. <laughs> now, now now it all makes sense. Now it all makes sense. Did exactly. this happen at twenty five too? <laughs> <laughs> was a later in life uh appreciation like an acquired taste yeah yeah i i have learned definitely to love a quality old-fashioned yeah and um we had an an a guest um i think that might have been nicole and we talked about uh the art of the muddle Ooh, yes yes you gotta you gotta you gotta muddle you do i totally agree with that is pre-mixed stuff agree totally agree my husband makes a fantastic old fashioned. He takes, I mean, it looks like it's a baseball bat that he's yeah. muddling with. It's, you know, that substantial um, to, to really get those cherries. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, you're holding out, my man. You, <laughs> and I'm going to have to, yeah, we're going to put that on the to, to do list. Uh, Excellent. Mugs have an Alex old fashioned. Come, come hang out in the driveway and have an Alex old fashioned. Oh, there we go. I'm holding you to the invite. Absolutely. We will message you the next time we're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix. Ooh, Netflix. So I don't know about you, but Netflix got us through the early pandemic for sure. 
Okay. <laughs> we, we binged. Um, have you watched Shit's Creek? The show? No, but that's oh. a fa- that's a that's been mentioned, and it's a favorite. People really like that. Yeah, the first season, uh, the characters aren't super likable, so you have to do a little work to get through the first season and then they grow on you over time and as they evolve so it's a it's a good it's a good story so uh so Chits Creek was a good one um I'm also a total um I love like the murder mystery kind of shows oh so we streamed all the seasons of Castle okay um yeah and then I, I also am pretty nerdy so we watched some documentaries as well. I did fun. too. Did you watch? Oh, tell me what uh, I'm always looking for a good recommendation. Okay. I can't, I, I'm going to be honest. You, no, that's you okay. got, you caught Oh, me. I didn't need to catch you off yeah, guard. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's okay. Fair. It's hard to remember the names too uh, when you, it, when yes. you're, yeah. But I mean, I've definitely sat down and watched a couple of documentaries where I was like, oh, they, they just seem interesting. And, yeah. and, you know, Netflix has a way of, uh, you know, I'm sure it's all, uh, all the uh, artificial intelligence in the background of reading my mind. And they're just like, oh, Timber would love this. Let exactly. me just put it in his face. <laughs> it's kind of it's the rabbit hole, right? It's yes. kind of like being that book at the library that's next to the one that you were looking for. You finish one and then it pops. The algorithm pops up. The next one's like, ooh, I don't think I can turn this off. <laughs> yes. They, they get me all the time. It's one or two things. They either get me where I turn it on and then I just watch or I get overwhelmed and I can't decide Um, what I want to watch and I get stuck. There is that risk as well that there's too many choices and then you just kind of freeze. Right. Right. Yeah. So, okay. I hear you. Um, summer. Oh, summer. Well, summer's exciting. This it's a, I, I love the seasons in Wisconsin. You know, there's not a bad season. It's really just what you're going to do with it. Mm. Um, but summer is really fun because we get to do all the outdoor stuff. I love uh, hiking and biking and um, exploring new places. So that's what I think about summer is being outside. I also like to garden and grow oh. stuff. So, yeah. So summer is the time to get out and do battle with weeds and <laughs> facts. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but if, you know, flowers blooming and, uh, just enjoying the outdoors. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with down the, the rabbit hole with you on the garden. Cause oh, you know, yeah. the garden, I, I'm, I like to grow a garden. Oh, you do. Yes. I didn't know this. In we had this in common. In our garden, our whole sole purpose of the garden is salsa. We oh. grow things to make salsa. Brilliant. I'm a bad man. I make some amazing salsa. Me and the wife, we handle business, but we go for it. And and it's serious. It's so serious like that it. when we make it, you got to put on some goggles. <gasps> the whole house gets fumigated. I, oh, so it's <sighs> spicy. Oh, you're, you, you, you you're hardcore. It, we, well, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Okay. Because I think there's a point when you do spicy things that you lose taste. <laughs> right? I don't just That's do fair. hot yes. for the sake of just right. hot. My stuff is hot, but the flavor is robust. Ooh. Okay. So we'll make the old fashions, but you're bringing the salsa. Oh, done. For the driveway because done. this sounds awesome. So you're growing like tomatoes and peppers yeah. and onions. What else do you put in it? Um, I don't want to ask for a oh, secret no, recipe or anything. I, I can't. I can't give you okay. more. Because right. there, there is secret ingredients oh. that go into it. Here, the a one, literal secret sauce. Th- there's literally some secret things to give it the right kind of flavor. You know, I, I don't want to hurt, you know. You know, one day I might have had a padness. <laughs> I like it. So, all right. Uh, the only other don't thing I will tell you is garlic. There must be um, garlic in it. Mm, yes. I'm I'm a pro garlic person. Yes. So all about that's, that. That's good. Ooh, this sounds good. So I like to grow uh, I, I grow some tomatoes. I grow some peppers. Uh, I grow, I love to grow squash oh. because they last over the winter. So I'd like to grow butternut squash. And last year I tried for the first time Brussels sprouts. Oh, how did those come out? I've always been curious. <laughs> they, um, they didn't. <laughs> they, <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> they, uh, the good news though, is they've resurfaced this year. They're, they're back and they're greener than ever. So, uh, 
Alex was reading online that they're actually biennial. So they, they do come back. So they didn't, they never produced a large enough brussel by the time it froze for me to harvest them last year. But now they're back. So I'm thinking I've got a huge head start this year. And maybe I'm going to have a bumper crop of Brussels sprouts. So we'll see. Okay. If anybody knows anything about Brussels sprouts, I'm open to your wisdom. Yeah. I'd, this I'd was li- new for me. I'd like to know more. And my question would be is when you plant Brussels sprouts, is it like one Brussels per seed kind of thing? No, or It's like a stalk. And they're, they're like... um. They wind their way all the way around the stalk. So you get, oh. I don't know, 25 or 30 of them on a stalk, I think, oh. is what's supposed to happen. Now, that didn't happen for me <laughs> last year. So <laughs> I'm, speaking, I'm speaking as someone who looked at what they were supposed to look like. So I'm hoping that this year will be a success story. I'm also hoping this year I put in asparagus, which is a, a perennial. Um, I put it that in three years ago, and I think it, the third year is supposed to be ready to harvest. But that's so. a lot of patience. You know, I'm I'm like not usually that patient a person. So this has been a long wait for me to get to that asparagus. Oh, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, it. Do, I think it does. It takes like three or four years before you, it really starts kicking in. But then once it kicks in, like. I it's, can't wait. Yeah. That's I love fresh fun. asparagus. You too. Yeah. Yes. There's right. this whole saute thing. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Roasted. Yeah. We grill it sometimes, and when I say we, I mean Alex. But the <laughs> the, um, the flavor you can do it so many ways, and it's fantastic. So, all right, yeah, I'm feeling that. All right, community. Oh, don't we have an awesome community? I mean, there's so many people doing interesting things here, making things happen. I I just think it's it's a fantastic. This is a fantastic place to live. It's the cash. It's the cash. What else can you say? There's, there's just, there's good happening and people, what I love about this place is people really roll up their sleeves and they're unafraid to take stuff on, you know, they're unafraid to, to make, start the new business, make the project happen. Um, that's what I, I think is really cool. Yeah. We got some pretty cool people around here and you're right. There is this whole thing that people, they get to action. They actually do things and, uh, there's something to be said, you know, a lot of, a lot of things get stuck in the idea phase. Exactly. And you need you need people. It's not the kind of place where we wait on one or two people to kind of champion it and do it. It's like there's a lot of champions of, of different kinds of things, a lot of people doing their part. And that's what makes it that's what makes it successful. It's like everybody pitching in to to do their piece of it. So I love that about this place. Okay. So next segment. The Naughty Slash Heroes Corner. Ooh. So you get an opportunity to nominate somebody to the Naughty or the Heroes Corner, or not necessarily somebody. Um, that is our, you know what, that's my nomination right now. <laughs> my nomination is for Bosco, the Naughty Dog, uh, to be in that corner. Well, yeah. maybe he's warning us about something and he actually belongs in the hero. I don't know. But it could, <laughs> could be. be. The only thing could he's be. probably he's warning us. Yeah, it maybe he's warning us about a treat. That's about. <laughs> <laughs> he's Good. like, I want, I want some action here. I, I, I want you guys to know about this. Uh, all right. So the the Naughty Corner. You know what? I have one, and this is this is uh, this is outside the kosh, but uh, I think that the. The naughty corner belongs for the people who are spreading disinformation about the vaccines. You know, I've Oof. I've seen that I've seen stuff going around, and it it just makes me kind of crazy. The uh, the spreading without checking the the facts, or gosh, uh. thinking about the fact that that might be intentional. Like I'm anxious to get back to back to the before times <laughs> right? recognizing they're not going to be the same. So it's like, we've got a path forward. Let's go after it and let's get this done. We all want to see each other. We all want to help these businesses that have struggled. We all want to do the right thing. So, so, you know, spreading this misinformation or disinformation is really kind of troubling. And, you know, we gotta, we gotta be good information consumers. We gotta fact check what we're, what we're sharing and make sure that it's, it's legit. That is so true, and you're so right about that. And and here's the funny thing: I notice sometimes that the people who have the most to say about things getting back to normal and their freedoms are the same people who might be sharing some disinformation. And and I, you know, it's it's so crazy to me because I think we all want the same thing. We do. 
we really do. And that's, that's why I think it's like, okay, we, our job here, we, our job here is to look at what's going to get us, what's going to get us there the fastest and the most direct route. And I think that's the, that's the path forward. So we all just have to be really aware and conscious of is, is what I'm sharing is the information I'm sharing legit. And this comes from, you know, so I was trained as a journalist. So this comes from my desire to fact check. Now I've, I have done it accidentally. And when I have, I've always tried to correct, you know, correct the mistake, like delete the post or add an update at the top. Like, oh, I didn't know this. And I want the rest of you to know that this is fake too. And, you know, we all, it's easy to fall. It's easy to just hit that share button and, and be part of that. But we all got to be smart about what we're, what we're putting out in the world. I do. I do agree. And to be fair, there was a lot of things that changed, right? So we started in this one place and then as there was research and, and mm-hmm. more uh, more participation in things, we learned. Um, but to be fair, I also think that people have to not hold that situation in a place where because they said this before mm-hmm. and then it changed to this. I mean, that's the scientific process. There's there's growth through it. You know? Right. We get smarter, so we do better. Right. But we're not going to. And it changes. Right. We're not going to get everything right exactly out of the gate. But new information, we have to be capable and willing to take it in and then make new decisions. I mean, I've, you know, we've all had moments in our lives where we thought something and then we got new information and we realized, wow, I was wrong about that. I think the best thing we can do in that scenario is be like, okay, I was wrong initially. Now I see that I was wrong and I'm adopting this new, this new path forward. So we, that's the scientific process. That's exactly it. It's like hypothesis, test, learn, new hypothesis, test, learn. We should be doing that all the time. All the time. Okay. Um, We are getting ready to jump into the topic of the week. Topic of the week is chosen by the guest. And so this week's topic is updates on the new food co-op construction. And since we have the president of the food co-op board here, I think we've got good information sitting in front of us. I'm so excited to talk about this. I mean, this has been a huge community project. So I'm I'm here talking about it, but boy, there have been just hundreds of people who've helped um, volunteer to make this happen. And that's why it's such a fun project to talk about. So for those who maybe aren't acquainted with the project in the Kosh, uh, the food co-op is a community owned grocery store that is opening at the corner of Jackson and Pearl later this year. And the, the vision for this is to strengthen the local economy, promote health and build community. So the local economy side of it is uh, the store, the grocery store is going to have an emphasis on locally grown and produced products. So we were talking earlier about. Right. This feeds right into the, we were talking about the food and and pizza and and, uh, bakery and all the locally grown and and produced uh, products here in our community. Um, That's part of not just in our community, but in this region in the state of Wisconsin. I mean, we're super lucky in Wisconsin because we have such a rich growing agriculture culture. Culture. Exactly. So there's amazing products produced in, in Wisconsin. And uh, so part of the focus for the the food co-op is to source, uh, you know, at least 20% of our goods locally and have make that available on the shelves. I think people, I don't know about you, but I'm like, I love the farmer's market, right? Mm -hmm. It's fun to go down there on a Saturday morning and see what's, what's being grown in real time. Farmer's market. Oh (laughs) Oh my God. We have such a great farmer's market here. It really is spectacular. And, um, we see that, uh, through the farmer's market, a lot of new businesses have started up and been able to sell, but there's kind of a gap between you, you can sell at the market and now you're you can, you have enough volume that you can sell at a major like chain grocery store. So we want to be the kind of the bridge to that, right? Where we can provide a seven day a week outlet to growers and producers to sell their goods um, and make them available to people in Oshkosh. Cause you know, sometimes you're out of town on a Saturday and you miss the farmer's market, but you still want to support local, local. So, so that's, that's one of the aspects of the, the food co-op is to strengthen the local 
the local food economy by bringing locally produced and grown products onto the shelves of the store. And then uh, I think the other thing that's noteworthy is that this food co-op will be the first food co-op in Northeast Wisconsin. So we're doing something here in Oshkosh that uh, no other community in Northeast Wisconsin has done as yet. That's huge. So the first of its kind, there's never been one in the past. uh, I think there've probably been some in the past, but there aren't any active food co-ops in Northeast Wisconsin right now. So yeah, so this'll be, this'll be new. Um, You know, there are really successful food co-ops in Milwaukee, Outpost Natural Foods in Madison, Willie Street in Eau Claire, Just Local Foods, Menominee has Menominee Market, La Crosse has People's Food Co-op. There's, they're all over the state. But we don't have any here, so we're kind of excited to bring this concept to Northeast Wisconsin, and yes, hope that some of the folks, you know, uh, who've experienced those other food co-ops and maybe our fans will find their way to Oshkosh uh, to to shop. And while they're here, maybe they'll check out some of the other awesome businesses that we have going on downtown, um, and that we'll be able to bring shoppers into the into the region. Is there like a food co-op following? I mean, is that a thing where people are yeah. like, let's go check out? Because if do other food co-ops hold a similar philosophy where they're doing their, they're trying to interact with their local um, producers and economy. Um, and so if you go to the food op, food co-op regionally you're very much connecting regionally with what's available and so it has this very um home grown feel to it right is, is that are, what's happening you are spot on there okay it's like you know this so well the uh yes each co-op each co-op is set up because they're community owned meaning people like you and me um, buy an ownership share of the and own the store, they tend to be really connected to and responsive to the needs of the community. But some things that are pretty consistent across food co-ops are an emphasis on local and and what's what's regional um, and their commitment to and give back to the community. Those are those are really important things in in food co-ops. And there's a there's also a sense of co-ops being a place that are um, welcoming and inclusive to all. Uh, I think that sense of community is also really important across food co-ops. So yeah, there are co-op, I think where this started was there are co-op kind of groupies, right? People who, if they're visiting a community, will check out the co-op. So we hope we can attract those folks uh, as they're, as they're visiting here in Oshkosh. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's really cool. Um, What else? So the, the, so that's kind of on the economic side. The other thing that has us excited is, you know, right now the, the neighborhood that we're locating in the, that corner of Jackson and Pearl is what the USDA calls, um, a food desert, like a low income, low access area. And if you think about this, um, if you think about trying to buy groceries and if you don't have adequate transportation, yes, it is not convenient. No, I, (laughs) there's, there's nothing to me sometimes Uh, more heartbreaking is watching somebody who has to get on the bus with their, they got their cart or they're trying to make, and, you know, and that, you know, I don't know where they're going, but in my mind, they're going halfway across the nation (laughs) and then they (laughs) get off the bus and then they still got to probably carry it a block or two to, to their home. And it just makes me, I don't know. It, it does make me feel some kind of way. Yeah. I, I totally agree. When I was a, college student, I did an internship out in Washington, DC, and I didn't have a car. So I, you know, hiked my way to the grocery store. And boy, did that make me aware of how much carrying groceries is, right? it's, it's tricky to get enough. And I mean, I was a one person show at that time, I wasn't buying for a family of four. And what would happen to my groceries, (laughs) you know, in the course of that transit, right? Stuff gets banged around and bumped. And it's not just like loading it up in your car and taking it in, you know, you might end up with broken eggs by the end of it, depending how careful you are. My biggest fear in that is the broken bag. Yeah. What do you do if your handles come off or your broken bag and you're you know, you're half a block away or whatever. I mean, that's <laughs> exactly, whoa. exactly. So the, uh, so that area that we're going to be in is, is underserved by grocery. And it's not the kind of place that probably a conventional grocery store is going to open a massive location. I think there was a lot of effort to try to recruit and, um, and, and that wasn't 
probably going to happen. It's probably not the economic model. So this is the kind of project that needs the community to come together and say, we want to do this and we're going to do this together. And so we're excited to be able to um, bring, you know, fresh goods, fresh produce, fresh fruits and vegetables, packaged goods, grab and go items, um, bakery, uh, dairy, you know, bring those products to that area so that it's easier for people who who live nearby to get access to fresh, healthy food. And that is really critical. I mean, what you eat influences your lifelong health. Absolutely. And so the thought that people might be substituting shopping at a convenience store, like a gas station or a dollar store or something like that as their primary source of food because they can't easily get to a grocery store. I mean, those, they're not the same, right? So we want, we want to provide in, in the, in and with the neighborhood, have a a prospering um, grocery store because we think it's good for the community. Well, the one thing you miss sometimes in those, um, and nothing against, um, the quick trips of the world. Oh, no, not at all. They play a role. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes what you're missing in, um, in food deserts is you, you, you can always find processed food, but to find fresh food and especially vegetables and fruits and stuff like that sometimes. And that's, let's face it, uh, whether we like it or not, the body, that's what the body needs. Yeah, absolutely. We might not like to eat our vegetables, but that's, they nourish us and they, they, yes, help us re- retain our health. And what we, we know League of Women Voters in Oshkosh did a study a few years ago, and they also found that, you know, if you're, if you don't have access to a grocery store and you're buying just basics, cereal, bread, um, soup, basics, things that, you know, and you're buying them at a substitute grocery store, you might be paying two to three times as much because they're also not priced as a grocery store. Exactly. So the people who probably can least afford it are actually being charged the most. So, so there's, there's lots of economic reasons and health reasons. I think that this this is a great location, and we're super excited to be to be locating there. Oh yeah, I I love the location. Oh, um, you know, just because of um, you know, if you've been around the Kosh long enough, you've watched that whole area transform. Oh from my goodness! All sorts of things that had used to used to be the gas station over there, and you know, they and it's just. Um, it's like it's, night and day difference right, right now. There, there used to be, uh, there used to be a, a bar there. I mean, there was just so much that's been in that area, and it's all cleared out. And then this starts going up, and I just think that is awesome. There's an emerging neighborhood when you look around. Yes, you know they redid the water tower a couple of years ago, and you look around that, and there's a part, you know, some apartment buildings, and I think some condos it, it's a little emerging neighborhood and so it's exciting to see the transformation that's happening and where the building where the brio building that's the name of the building that the food co-op will be located in i mean that used to be a blighted site it right. was you know contaminated the city remediated oh. it so this is um it's considered an opportunity zone it was de- declared um a, a property that uh is in need of investment um that's a federal designation uh an opportunity zone and and I think to see, as you just said, what's happening uh, in that whole neighborhood is really exciting. I think one of the best hidden gems in Oshkosh is the Riverwalk. Oh, yeah. I love the Riverwalk. Yeah, no no doubt. And I think uh, that is totally transforming that whole little loop uh, around our downtown, you know, from the Main Street Bridge up to Wisconsin and Ohio and back. And I think this is this development is just one example of what's cool that's happening in that area. I mean, people in, in other areas, uh, particular other larger urban areas, people pay big money to have access to things like that. And we have it here in the cash and um, it's available to everyone. It's beyond affordable to, to get to, to reach, to have access to. And 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 it's not built in a way where it feels, uh, for lack of a better term, economically biased. It, right. It's accessible to everyone. And I see I see everyone using the Riverwalk, whether Absolutely. they're fishing off the fishing pier or they're, uh, you know, hanging out in some of the parks that are adjacent or just walking, biking, 
you know, scootering, <laughs> rollerblading, whatever that might be. The whole nine. The whole nine, exactly. So, and I just, I love that. I think it's such a great asset and feature um, that we have in the community. So, so we're happy because the co-op is, you know, just a, about a block off of the river walk. So we think that makes it one of the, one of the things that we considered in the site selection process was accessibility. So are we close to the bus line? Will we be easy to park? Can you walk to get there if you live in downtown? Uh, you know, and, and are we, and we added a nice benefit because we're so close to the river, you could even boat up and tie up. There's some docks, you know, kind of by those apartment buildings. So you could boat up and and take advantage. And we think that that, that's great. It's, you know, close to downtown. It's close to the university. Um, As a student, that's another time in life, I think, when people end up walking for groceries. So to be close for students, I think, is also really cool. So I do think that is important. Uh, The students... Uh, um, students have an access, access to a, a, a close grocery store. And I think it's great because, you know, you don't always have access to transportation <laughs> when right. you're living on campus. Right, exactly. And we've, uh, I had the, uh, the fun of meeting with uh, Oshkosh Student Association, OSA, like the governmental group of students and talking to them about the project and hearing like, what are the things that you need? And I think that's the other thing that they talked about. There are a lot of, um, uh, dietary needs that students have, you know, some are vegetarian, some are vegan, some have gluten allergies, et cetera, and wanting to find a place that's easily accessible where they can buy, um, as they called it, dorm friendly meals. You know, things right. that we can, we can, uh, store and, you know, in, I'm envisioning the mini fridge and the microwave, you know, yes. cause that's kind of what you have access to, but that, that are still good and meet your dietary needs. So I think there's, I think there's lots of opportunity there to help students also live healthy lives. No, oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So there is, a, a, so I've got a couple of things. Please bring it on. All right. So, um, I've heard that uh, the location will house the opportunity for community to meet there, um, to utilize for uh, whatever the community needs, uh, whether it's meetings or or things of that sort. Um, I'm more curious about, I'm also curious about what else is included in that location and the housing on top. And, and, you know, I, I drive past, this construction every day on my way to work and as I watch it and it's becoming I, I'm I'm a I'm like everybody else uh, who lives in the cash I'm excited for it but I'm curious about it yeah. so you know what what's all happening yeah so the Brio building itself is 60 apartment units and then first floor retail wow there's 60 units there's 60 units and they range Bro. from uh, s- uh studio units to two bedroom, two bath. That's the size okay. of the units and their market rate, uh, which when the developers, when merge urban development, they're doing the building. When they first came to town, they, uh, told us that they interviewed people around the community to ask like, what are the kinds of housing that are needed in the community? And one of the things that they heard was that, uh, there's a need for the, these sizes of apartments or these styles of apartments and for market rate kind of in the central city. So that's, that's what they're developing. Um, I'm hoping that they'll have, and I haven't talked with them, um, to know, but I'm hoping that they'll have an opportunity. I think you right now, if you're interested, you can go to the site and schedule or you can schedule an appointment to go to the site and get a tour. I think they're at that point in the process. Oh, and I, wow. Yeah. And I think they've actually, um, I know that they have actually signed some leases with people already. Um, the first person that they signed a lease with, they actually gave a membership to the food co-op. So as, as part of the congratulations and, and marking the occasion. So it'll be neat to have residents in the building right. uh, it, for, for the co-op as well as well. And I'm hoping that will be a resource for the residents in the building. We as the co-op will be a resource for residents in the building. Um, the, the, the first floor, uh, will contain the food co-op. And then we leased some additional space that we hope to grow into over the next years. Okay. You know, it may take five, 10 years until we're, (laughs) until we're at that point, but we leased some additional space. Uh, so we're hoping to be able to sublet that space to a tenant. Okay. So we, uh, we're in talks with a prospective tenant right now, and we've had interest from some others as well. So we're hoping to be able to lease that tenant space. 
there's two separate tenant spaces, um, and that, that we're looking at leasing. Um, we are, so within the space there, within the store space, we also have a little indoor, um, seating area that will be, that will have tables and like a little, uh, window, um, sort of bar height you know, is that, that so people can work at kind of like a little cafe feel. Yeah. Not, there won't be like a counter where you order stuff. You'll grab stuff if you want something to eat or drink from the rest of the store. Right. And then once you check out, you can sit in this little eating area. That's kind of the game plan. That is awesome actually. Yeah. So there'll be a little space for people to hang out or sit with their laptops or, you know, whatever it is, but we're hoping that that becomes a little community gathering space. That's one of the other ideas behind this project. There just, there aren't enough places that kind of bring people together and act as the community's kitchen table. And that's really what one of the things that we're hoping will happen at the food co-op. What we've seen in food co-ops around the country that we love is that they become kind of gathering places for the community. Um, In Durham, North Carolina, there's a really cool thing that they do, which is the community dinners. So once a week they offer five dollar dinners oh and it's a great you know and it might be taco night or lasagna night or uh you know who knows what what kind of fare they're they're serving um but it's usually a healthy alternative to and and affordable alternative to you know drive through somewhere um and it brings people together they pre-pandemic they would have seven to eight hundred people gathering at their grocery store in their parking lot eating in the aisles i mean it was just crazy and our mentor co-op in Menominee on the west side of the state uh, does community dinners as well. I think theirs are four dollar dinners, and they do, um, and they would have two to three hundred people. So we're hoping that over time we can develop something like that at the food co-op that brings people together because you know food does that. Oh, food, yeah, right. Like you and I are talking about salsa, and I'm like my mouth is watering as you're describing your sal- your salsa. Food has a way of bringing people together. So we're hoping that the food co-op can be that kind of force in the community. So, you know, people like you and I can get to know each other over this common shared interest in food. Right. Well, food is, I mean, it's, it, we all need it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I Something about breaking bread with people. It's like you share something that is... Um, that connects you it leaves you with yeah you you can talk in a way that you don't always get to in other settings right because it's this relaxed like we're going to enjoy a meal together and we're going to have conversation and there's something you're right there's something kind of magical that happens in that yeah it's not forced exactly exactly all right um i i what what am i not asking What, what else is happening Right. Right there that that like I wouldn't even know to ask. Sure. Oh, I like this question. This is good. What have I not told you yet? Well, construction, the build out for the actual grocery store is underway. And in fact, we're going to have a video that drops on our social media uh, tomorrow that shows kind of the inside of the store as it is. But the drywall is up and it's they're getting ready to start painting. So we're at that point in the process. And after that, they start bringing equipment in. Okay. So the the store is coming along. We have a general manager who um, joined us in December. His name is Jeffrey Tyrone. He's uh, er, he moved here, relocated to the community from Rapid City, South Dakota. And he is in the process of hiring. So this is probably one of the big things to talk oh, about. Oh, so that's actually, we're we're hiring. We're hiring, exactly. Okay. We've got some really key positions. So I'm hoping maybe your Kosh listeners are going to be able to refer some good people to us. Yeah, I did. we're going to have to, we, I'm going to need some information so we can put that in the in, in the podcast notes. But okay. how, do you, how do you apply? I mean, uh, yeah, you know. so we've got an application on our website at oshkoshfoodcoop.com. There's a jobs tab Um, And so if you go there, it will take you to the open positions and then you can complete an online application. Um, And then we're going to have a couple of job fairs coming up in uh, June that will be opportunities for people to just go and and meet the meet the hiring team and and 
and hopefully be, be able to staff the store. So right now we're looking for a kitchen manager. So if there's somebody out there who's listening and knows somebody in with kitchen management experience, uh, we're gonna, it's going to be a great place to work. And oh, yeah. we're super excited about um, what this person can do. They will they will be able to have influence on the, the prepared foods um, that we offer. So that's like the grab and go deli stuff and oh. bakery and and. So it's going to be a great role. And then we're also hiring a front end manager um, and a produce manager. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So those are those are available positions. And, you know, I don't I don't know if people always think of like grocery as a way that they can um, have an impact on the community. But this is a way to have an impact on the community. So this is a this is a mission driven kind of project. And I think if somebody's got that kind of heart where they want to help make a difference in the community, right. this is a great way to do it. For those with the with the servant hearts. Exactly. Exactly. So we hope that um, those are the first those are the first three positions that we'll be hiring, but then there'll be other positions that have to get filled in to help with the store as well. Uh, so and it's gonna be it's gonna be a really good team. Do we have a launch date? I mean, an opening date? Well, we're targeting late summer, early fall. And honestly, filling these positions is is probably the biggest um, piece that we need to do right now to stay on track with that. So help us spread the word, folks, um, and and get people in there. Um, I think it's it's an exciting time. And, and the more we can... The more we can help spread the word about those positions, the better off we'll be. Absolutely. And if and if you're out there listening, please feel free to reach out to the Kosh and I will be happy to connect you um, with Brenda or whoever is appropriate. <laughs> and, yeah. we'll, and we'll try to see if we can make some connections and get and get some people um, some great opportunity. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. And it's really important to us as a as an organization that our we're trying really hard to ensure that our team reflects the community. So um, diversity, equity, inclusion, those are all really important issues as an organization. So just Absolutely. making sure that we spread the word um, across the community is important. All right. Anything else? Just uh, can't wait to one, one other thing that I want to talk about is just an event that we have coming up. Oh, a co-op birthday bash specifically for uh, the neighborhoods that we're, that we're going to be located in, we want to make sure that people know that we're going to be opening. So on Saturday, June 12th, we are um, planning uh, an event to come and learn more about the co-op that'll be in the Aurora parking lot. So there's an Aurora clinic right on Jackson Street. Right. And we have that event coming up. Um, and it'll be, it'll be kind of a fun event. So stay tuned, save the date. We'll have more details that will be coming out. All right. I have the, I have the all important question. Yes. Um, is there food? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Look, look, Brenda, let's not front. (laughs) At at the end of the day, uh, you know, people come when there's food and uh, you know, let's, let's, is there food? (laughs) Could you hold a food co-op event without food? I would think that would be a terrible idea. Hey, don't want to assume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. So save the date, Saturday, June 12th. It'll be in the afternoon. All right. And I want to throw in one more thing. Once again, for people who want to become member owners. Yes. How do, how do they do that? Oh, if you can become a member owner. It's a $180 fee and that can be paid either all at once or over an 18 month period for $11 a month. And you can go on our website, oshkoshfoodcoop.com slash join is where the the membership um, form is. And some people ask, is that an annual fee? Like, do I have to pay that every year? No. When you buy an ownership share, you're buying and you own a piece of the store. So this isn't a recurring fee. This is once you're $180 is paid, um, or you, or you finish those 18 months of payments, you're, you're, you're an owner. You're an owner. Yep, exactly. So easy, easy to do. And then as an owner, you get invited to vote. You get to elect the board of directors. That's something people don't always know. So you, you own the place. You, you have a say, you have an influence. And then we do owner kind of special events. We hold an annual meeting that our owners are invited to, to update them on what's happening Uh, the state of the co-op. And then we are also looking at how we can offer special owner benefits once the stores open. So, so owners will have some little rewards, some perks, some perks. Exactly. Exactly. For being an owner. You can't turn down a good perk. Exactly. Plus you get, I mean, right now there's 
like a little bit of pride, I think, in being an owner. Yeah. You know, you are, as an owner, you are help, helping make this project happen. This wouldn't happen. We have 1,550 owners and growing, and this project wouldn't have happened without those people. So I think there's a lot of pride that people can take in knowing that they helped make this happen. Well, okay. Well, Kosh listeners out there, I hope that after you listen to this episode that we have uh, 1,550 plus yes. owners. Exactly. Uh, so We will take it. We welcome one and all. Uh, that's really a, a critical piece for us. So please do join us and help us make this project happen. That is awesome. All right. I think uh, we're going to start wrapping up. Let's do it. Okay. So we're at that point where uh, we start wrapping up. Once again, uh, Kosh listeners, as you always know, we are a work in progress. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you. Um, please, please, please email, email, uh, Facebook message us. Uh, let us know what you think. If you've got new segment ideas, because <laughs> you know. And um, we want to hear from you. Um, I respond to everything personally, so we appreciate it. And if you want to email us, you can email us at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekosh at gmail.com. I love hearing from you all out there. Um, my, you know, this is that part of the show. It is shout out time. I love shout out time. Oh yeah, shout out time is good time. So okay, so Brenda, um, who do you who do you got that you want to shout out? Uh, well, let's see. I I first want to shout you out. I think you do a great job of bringing some different voices to Oshkosh and to listeners, and I think that's just awesome. So I want to shout you out. I don't know if everybody, uh, I think everybody listening would agree with that, that we appreciate the, the, uh, the, the exposure that you are giving to, to, to people and projects in the community. Hey, I love the cash. Yeah. Uh, the cash has been good to me. I want to be good to the cash. Um, and there's just so many good people here and, and, why not celebrate that? Like uh, we, it is so easy to pay attention to the challenges and we never spend enough time celebrating all the good. And we have so much to celebrate in this community. So I, I just like to, let's, 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 let's go on and celebrate girl. Exactly. <laughs> Share the love. That's, that's our, that's our thing. Share the love. So, well, and it's mother's day. So I of course have to shout out all the moms, right. Oh, and all the mom like figures who, who just help us guide us, teach us, and, uh, you know, I feel really lucky to have, to have the mom that I have. And I know a lot of other people feel the same way. So we gotta, we gotta shout out the moms today. Um, and I also have to shout out my husband who, uh, was, you know, just amazing during this whole pandemic thing. I would wake up in the morning and he would have coffee waiting for me. So he's just like the best. I won the husband lottery. I always say, so I have to give him a shout out. And, uh, and then of course I'm totally, uh, just blown away by the 1,550 member owners who are helping make the Oshkosh Food Co-op happen. And I want to shout them out because this is a project that doesn't happen if the community doesn't come together to make it happen. And I, I love the applause there for that because I think they're they're cool. And, and then I think the last is just there's a lot of people who do things in this community who are, they're quiet about it. And, oh, yeah. And and things, they just kind of work behind the scenes. They don't seek attention and they just make things happen. And I, I just, they know who they are and I would shout them out because I think that there's a lot of good that, that comes and And I really admire that, that servant heart to be able to do that work and, and believe so strongly that, that we can continuously work to make this a better place and, and that they just are going after it. We got some low key heroes. We do. We really Some do real low key heroes. And, and sometimes you don't even know you're sitting next to them. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I, I have a great appreciation for that. Agreed. All right. I want to go back real quick to your, your shout out to your mom, because we're going to interact a segment. Oh, yes. That's yes. right. So that's right. It, what is the advice that was that was ever given to you from mom? That 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 one that sticks with you. Sure. So advice from my mom that sticks with me. Um, my my parents were always big on saying, always leave things better than you find them. Ooh. 
And I think that was good advice. You know, whatever you touch, you can always try to take it to the next level. You can always try to do something more. And I think that's good advice to approach life with how can I add value to this or how can I help here in a way that's that's going to advance the cause. So that's probably advice that I've that I've tried to follow in my life. I like that. Good looking out, mom. Yeah, <laughs> good looking out. <laughs> All right. Once again, I'd also like to follow and say uh, shout out to all the moms out there, especially the moms that are in my life. Uh, my, my mom, my sister, who's a new mom, uh, my wife, uh, most definitely, and a whole aunts, in-laws, all of those great moms out there. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you. Uh, the world can't function without you. Thanks. Let's just be honest. <laughs> right? Exactly. Um Another special shout out to Michael and Leaf. Uh, got your message. You know what's up. Can't wait. Can't wait. It's on the horizon. Ooh, All mystery. Right? Yes, yes. Um, a special shout out to Gwen and Mike. Uh, they are uh, what I would like to call my uh, remodel team. Um, <laughs> they've done amazing, amazing work. Um in, in the house, my my paint job. I I had uh, somebody come in the house uh I think it was yesterday and they they were like your paint job is amazing and i was Ooh. like yes it is mm-hmm. so if anybody needs an amazing painter out there uh get at the cash I'll, I'll uh I'll, I'll hook you up all right and we we haven't said this yet but to our up and coming graduates we are about a week yeah. away from commencement um for all those new uh, alumni titans that are right on the horizon a week out to walk across and we're having in-person graduation Yay! so cool oh my god yes and and <laughs> it's amazing to have that mm-hmm. in person again yes i can't stress that uh shout out to the administration team of the university for being bold brave and and having a plan so we could do these things. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of other institutions that did not um, they did not go that road. And I'm not trying to knock anybody for what they did or didn't do, but I want to celebrate the fact that we are. I think it's incredible, and how wonderful for those students to be able to take part. It's, you know, it's been such a challenging couple of years for them, so yes. to be able to take part in this and have this sense of uh, normalcy, I think is just incredible. Well, you know, you as, as somebody who walked across the stage themselves, yeah. you know, when you get done with that four oh. plus years of, of going through college, you want, that's your yes, day. Exactly. You need that day. So you've uh, earned that day. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. All right. So last thing, and you gave us a little taste for mom, but now we, we need yours. <laughs> uh, parting words of wisdom. What do you what do you got for us, Brenda? I there's an there's a what I believe is an African proverb that I absolutely love, and it's it's uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And oh, I that's really deep. that speaks to me. I love uh, when people come together to work together and make something better. And I think that we get further when we do that, when we come together and find find the things that unite us and that you know, that we have in common and that we can, that we can work together toward. All right, Brenda. So what did you think? Uh, did you enjoy this? This was a blast. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for doing this. Once again, to all you out there in Kosh land, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. The Kosh. <laughs>